It's a little, it's mildly funny. Oh. <laughs> come on, because I, I can't stick oh. around, so you come. I have um, another meeting. I, have I got Tiff, I got Karim, I got Joy. Joy. Grace. Easy names, not so easy. Tiff's easy. But Tiff's easy, easy. Right. easy. And I was able to figure like it out. Sunday morning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did anybody watch the HBO special last night, the concert on uh, DC? No. Uh -uh. That's pretty good. Like I said, it was like I watched it. It was very entertaining and very moving in spots. It ended with um, with uh, Eminem doing his thing, mm -hmm. and like I said, thank God it was on HBO. Otherwise, it would have been him on stage and just a constant beep. Oh wow! You know, oh, yeah, it, it wow. wasn't on HBO. It wasn't gonna make it on TV. Yeah, trust me. yeah. That's typical of him. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll wait for Tiff. Somebody else coming? Oh, oh no! But I said I responded yes. And then I've now I'm uh, I'm a halfway issues. out. Yeah, so I have to go back. I have um, I was asked to get something ready for my three o'clock, and I don't have ready. Like it was last minute. So uh, I don't know. And I have something that uh, I do too. Hello, I'm Robin. Robin that I'm Jerry. not ready Jerry, you you. You. So it's going to be hard to give up too much. Right. Over there is best. Yeah, Rhonda, Rhonda, I'm not, I, I can't stay for the whole thing. I suspect, I don't know how long I'll be there, but you go ahead and sit down. Well, we'll be about three hours, and then I have yeah, bladders coming. You can sit there. Rhonda says drinks there, man. I'm okay. I'm okay. I just ate Chinese food, and it's like, you know. It's right. Uh, yeah, do you need, I don't know. I can get, would you like a glass of water? I'm fine. I'm fine. Sure? I'm going to go find beer after. No, I'm kidding. You're going to have to look far. Just, is it the last one? 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 Is my well, daughter calls back and I say, she, she wants food and all that stuff. I go, Dini, what are you doing with all the money? Because she works on campus. She goes, well, I buy things with it. Stop buying beer. I buy things with it. Or buy cheaper beer. Right. Start living like a cow. Okay, you guys ready? This will all be on a test, so pay close attention. Yeah, we're paying close attention. So, does everyone know who Epson is? Who owns Epson? Bet you don't know. Seiko. So the whole story, so I get watches cheap too. Um, Seiko invented the LCD. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? So anything with an LCD in it that's that's bigger than that's smaller than a laptop, it's probably made by by us. We're an OEM. We manufacture everything for everybody. Every smartphone screen is probably a Seiko LCD. So we've been doing this forever. Our corporate name is Seiko Epson Corporation. So that evolved into creating, we were the first to invent a data projector, right? And that was three LCD panels, red, green, blue, hanging on the wall, push light through glass, and you get a mm -hmm. projector. And the first one we made before I was born, 14 years ago. Now, I've been with Epson 17 years ago. But the first one we made. Hi, Kirk. Hi, Kirk. Hi, Kirk. Good. I'm not, I'm not so outnumbered anymore. It was tough. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> the first one we made was called In Focus. Mm -hmm. Heard of that, Brent? Right? So we put them on the map. So we built for other people. We actually built for 28 other companies, but we are the manufacturer. So when you buy an Epson, you're getting the leading edge. Tiff, what was my little demo there? So today, this is how many projectors we make. It's ridiculous on both sides. And unfortunately, I have to know all of those. But one of the things, and the whole purpose of that story was because of that, Epson was the first to invent the interactive projector, okay? Years before, and you have one of them. You used to have to buy a board, and you mm -hmm. bought a projector. You married the two. This was probably the lesser of the solutions, but this was still several thousand bucks, I'm guessing. But they could go from anywhere from three to six to seven thousand dollars to get an interactive board, and you were always limited image size to the size of the board itself. And the bigger the board you bought, you paid for more square inches. Mm -hmm. You paid a premium, so there was always a luxury. And then now, as everything gets widescreen, right? That's a premium. So you want to buy a board now? You're paying extra because it's WXGA versus XGA and other acronyms. So when Epson invented the first projector, we called it a bright link. We announced it at a show. It was fifteen hundred dollars for everything. The only thing it didn't have was the smart software, the Prometheus software, whatever you needed. So we went from fifteen hundred from, from five thousand dollars to fifteen hundred dollars overnight. We were like we went like this. And it was awful because we didn't have enough, right? So then a couple other manufacturers came up with products similar to ours, and they're still out there. But what's different now is we're in the fifth generation Epson, Brightlink, and we actually make five different models that all do different tricks. So you can buy more specific to your to your specific requirement, and you can mix and match. And for the teacher or the professor or the instructor or the businessman, 
They're going to grab the pen. They're going to walk up to that. And that the delivery mechanism is going to be transparent. It doesn't matter how the information gets there. And when this is mounted correctly, by the way, it mounts up there. Sticks off the wall 14 inches. Is something I said? No. Uh, sticks off the wall about 14 inches, so it's called ultra short throw. So you can stand in front of it and not get light in your eyes. All right? When it's mounted right, you walk up to it, there's no shadow. So unlike this, I'm sure when you stand in front of that, you're blocking what you're trying to, right? So ultra short throw prevents all of that stuff as a side effect of its design. Okay. And this image will be eight feet big. You can get it up to eight feet. And the way you've got this thing painted, you could fill it probably close to the top of the body. Careful what you wish for because you got to be able to reach it, right? Mm -hmm. So always make it for the shortest person in the room. Thank you. All right? I'm looking up for you. <laughs> okay? So now, all interactive projectors up till now still required a computer to work, right? Because the software lived in the computer. And, in the case, and, and this will do that. But right now, I've got nothing connected to it at all. Right, it's just it's just plugged into the wall. What the Breitling Pro series does is it allows you to, when I turn it on, it's automatically an interactive whiteboard. It's built in. So I can walk up to it right now, and I'm teaching like you know a high-level math class. Okay. Anybody? Anyone? All right. Okay. Okay. On and on and on. Just like a whiteboard. Now, if you're doing it with a whiteboard, what's the next thing you would do if you needed more room? Erase it, right? Mm -hmm. But if this were something you wanted to keep, I just have a page. That stays. I can do more stuff. I can, the wall. I can do more stuff. I can change colors. Do whatever you want. In fact, in fact, you have you know, a whole choice of colors if you want to get really fancy. You missed the drawing. I see it now. Tiff, no, Tiff on a Cadillac. <laughs> she got she got the secret the double. I'd rather stuff. have a Lincoln. <laughs> you I was going to take you for a ride, but forget it. <laughs> She's a Camaro girl, I'm told. Anyway. Yeah. Um, but so all this is is out of the gate. I have an interactive whiteboard with nothing connected to it. So if I were just wanting to walk into a classroom to just have a, a, a quick, I'm I'm just today I'm just going to profess. Okay, I don't need any. I don't need any supplement, supplemental information. I just want to bring stuff up here. I can talk to it. I can make all my notes just like a dry erase board. But every page I'm doing is going to be added. And at the end of the day, there's a little white panel that mounts next to this right here. And this has a place that I can download what I just did, save it as a PDF here. I have the ability to email it. I can email it. I can save it to a remote computer. And I can print it to a local or, or network printer. That's all how you configure this. But none of it requires any software. None of it requires me doing anything other than turning it on. Okay? So it's basic, out of the box, raw form. And by the way, ask me questions, interrupt me. I'm still rushing off this MSG buzz I have right now. But anything that, you're, uh, that you do typically in a class where you grab a dry erase pen, you can now do it digitally and not miss a beat. But here's what you can do, you can't do it anything else. So we talked about this, we talked about that, and now you got a page. Um, give me a topic. What are we teaching in college? Ladies? Gentlemen? Statistics. Statistics. Okay, anything else? <laughs> uh, all right, so let's say architecture. Okay, so I need somebody to go out. Everyone go out today and take pictures of your phone of Romanesque arches and what's the other one's called? It's the only thing I remember is I went to college in France for a year. Romanesque arches and the pointed ones. All right, so everyone go out. Your assignment is to go take pictures of all these different angles and things because we want to review them in, in engineering. Okay, so I'm going to go out with my phone and take some pictures. I'm going to walk in, I connect to the phone, I mean, I connect to the projector, and then I say, I'm doing this without my glasses. I'm sorry. I hope you. I hope the wireless is there. It's. I hope the wireless. It's all built in. Okay. This is Epson. Okay. Remember who owns Epson? You paying attention? Yeah. Barely. <laughs> that could be on who wants to be a millionaire someday. I know. And you're going to thank me. So <laughs> now, I go out and I find a picture, and I say I want to project that. Go to my source. 
and I can say source. This is going to be mounted on the wall, right? Still no computer. Maybe there's no batteries in here now either. Okay. It's going to go out. It's going to look for the next input wherever it's seeing signal. There's my phone. Okay. Now, okay, we looked at all these angles or you know whatever, and now I want to I want to mark these up so I can say you know this you know that's the doors right and that's that. Okay, so but we've made notes on material coming off the phone. Still no computer, but this is relevant to those other two pages we talked about. So now that's coming off my phone. I don't have a computer connected. I got nothing going on here, but I want that as part of my document, right? Because we're going to post this online, or you know, it's going to be a study guide for whomever, whatever. Or I just want to archive it for next year when I teach this class again because this is a one-off picture that I can't get again, or whatever the reason is. So I can take that on that button. It's got a button called capture, or right here, I have a little picture of a camera. I say yes, I want to save that image. This is pretty high graphics, so it's going to take a second. I was going to put a picture of my dog, but so full of head, so, you know. And I can go back to my whiteboard, and here's what we talked about, here's what we talked about, and there's that image now built into that. So unlike a dry erase board, I can suck stuff in from anywhere and make it one continuous folder. And this will go up to, I think it's 150 slides before you got to save it and start a new one. And if any professor in this school could teach a class with more than 150 pages in a day, I want to meet them. So that's, you know, that's a lot of memory. So that's, that's Brightlink Pro 101. This is the first thing it does. Mm -hmm. You like it? I mean, can, so... Again, because I'm interrupting. Yes. When, when you save it to, you say you save it probably as a PDF on the Mac. Yes. Where does it exactly get saved? Your choice. So let's talk about that. So the connectivity is as follows. When you install it, you mount it to the wall. All you need to do at that point is put it on the network. And if you stick a network jack into it, then you can have a remote server someplace anywhere that has folders set up for whomever are the users of this thing. And each person's folder. They can send files to or upload files from. So you could be working from home and put together a PowerPoint presentation, save it to your folder as a PDF, walk into your meeting without seven pounds of ugly Lenovo, walk up to this board, go to your file over here, hit that remote server, upload your file on here, and you'll get these pages and you scroll from like a presentation. That's more of, a, of an internal looks thing than, than anything that's proprietary to that. As far as as far as how you connect it, yeah, how you store it, and yeah. how you retrieve it—that's up to you. Yeah, or you don't have to connect it to anything. I'm going to tell you why you want to. You don't have to connect it to anything and just have that little panel stuck on the wall, and then just have your PDF on a thumb drive and stick it in right here. Can I save it to my phone and then just go ahead and connect it to my phone as you just did with that picture? So off of your phone, you can stream everything but video. And that's a, that's because that's a. Um, which Apple call it AirPlay thing, so it's proprietary. But you can do all Microsoft Office files, mm -hmm. PDFs, JPEG images, uh, web pages, and Keynote. Okay, then you also have the email there. How would I go about that? Would have to be, that would have to be networked. That would have to be networked. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, but as, but the I'm going to go over a second what the other reasons you want to network it because it's that much more powerful. But as the basic interactive projector right now, without utilizing any tools. Other than what's built in, you can have a complete meeting and or have a class, teach a class, and utilize resources remotely from anything. You, if you're teaching a class in uh, uh, accounting, you could load Excel spreadsheets into this thing and build them into your same document, capture you know, images from that. Now you have working Excel spreadsheets built into a PDF folder. As you know, you maybe you show the different steps on how to do something. Give me an economic term. The economical, right? So you could just do all that, right? It wasn't economics. Can this be asynchronous? Can, can someone outside of this room view what's going on? Um, Seriously? Did someone give him a dollar to ask me that? Yeah, question? I did, actually. Yeah. But more than that. It took me a while to think of that word asynchronous. I want you to know that I was struggling with that. Hmm. I gotta look it Is up. that a yes or a no? Yes. yes. Okay. So, okay, let's, let's skip ahead then, because I know you're in a hurry. So, I'm going to show you how it works just like a regular bright link in a second. But So, suffice it to say, I know you'll like them. So a projector is a projector, and I always describe Brightlink as a projector on steroids because it does all the cool stuff with the pens. I describe a Brightlink Pro as a Brightlink on, on steroids because it does everything a Brightlink does. So if you wanted to replace this 
you put a standard bright link in here and you're good. And, you, and I've just saved you four grand. Okay. If you want to put a bright link pro in here, I'm still going to save you three grand, but you're going to have even much more tools now. So bright link pro, the new version that's just coming out is going to offer two more features that is really awesome. One of them is called moderator. And moderator is the ability for me to have a meeting in this room. Actually, three features. Moderator is, the, is going to have the ability for me to have a meeting in this room and up to 50 of you log into this device into a waiting room. And I'm going to see you all on my machine and choose whose screen up to four I want to put on this board in the room. So that's my right. I'm going to answer your so, question. So when you say 50, 50 from anywhere. 50, well, yes. You get 50 different sites. It can be. As long as they can get to this device from any device, and that includes um, iPads, Droids, anything but Chromebook. We'll talk about Chromebook in a second. And anything but Chromebook, they can log into this thing in my moderator mode, and then I can choose, you know, oh, here comes Karim. Let's put her stuff up there. Bam. And we'll see your screen. And I can choose four screens to put up simultaneously. So if we all have a different project, or everyone has a different part of the project, you know, licensing and statement of work, whatever, you put all four items on the wall and go. You can also split screen this and have a video teleconferencing in one corner while you have a PowerPoint going on in the other corner. You can see your audience. So that feature is called moderator. Then we've added something called share my whiteboard. Now that is, I load this thing and I turn it on and I will get an HTTPS address. And I can shoot that out to whomever I want and they can log into that address and participate with me on their machine. They'll see this there. And whatever they write there shows up here. Whatever I write here shows up there. So if they're out there, they can write stuff on your board? That's right. Type, type, type it. They would type and it would show up. Yeah. Yeah. Or if they have an iPad, up, they could yeah, draw. Right. draw. Up, to 15, up to 15 remote users and connect and share my whiteboard. So if I'm not in whiteboard mode, I would have to put it in the whiteboard. So it's like if I brought up the picture of the tiger, I could cut it. And I'll tell you where it's being used right now, but I could cut and paste it, you know, make my comments, put it in the whiteboard, then they would see, everyone would see it, and then they could add their comments and notes to it if they want to add to it. Johns Hopkins is doing just that with these. They bring up x-rays, and they consult with doctors. One guy's in Saudi Arabia, and they, they scan the x-ray. They bring it up on the whiteboard. You know, what about this? What about this? And all of a sudden, you see an orange pen coming from nowhere, and this guy's on his VTC going, yeah, you know, maybe you ought to consider, it's crazy. Does it identify who's inputting? Wait, is there, is like that orange pen that you just talked about, is there a way to tell who, who that's coming from? I don't know. I can ask, I don't know. I think I, I, I want to know that if somebody was writing on my board. Like, like, well, they're gonna, first of all, you have to give, well, yeah, but you're gonna give them the HTTP address anyway, mm -hmm. okay? Now, in addition to that, so you got moderator, and you can share my whiteboard. Now, that the limitations to share my whiteboard are, you know, 15 people or do whatever. You also got a, a third one, and the third one's called, um, I don't know what it's called, but it's multi-site collaboration. So if I have four of these in four different parts of the world, I can connect all four and have conference rooms of people here, there, and everywhere, anywhere in the world. All sitting on, you know, getting into this onto your network via VPN, so they're all sitting on the same network, and just have a complete power meeting. And if you did a split screen, you could have the VTC at the other room you're talking to while the meeting is going on over here, and you could, it would be a complete live, fully interactive session. So That's, these are all VPNs. This, this, yeah, you want VPNs so that you could log into this device. So, um, so in this last one, this multi-site collaboration, that requires that four the other, of these. The other site. Has to have one of right. A max of four for necessity. Like, no, a max of four. Oh, okay. So if we have a site in Mesa and we want to have this. Yeah, you just have two going. Okay. okay. Yeah. But no, I, don't, I want you to have four. Okay. You can have eight and then do four at a time. Three more. Right. Four. Sixteen. Will you share so this? Oh, share the web whiteboard online. Mm -hmm. Does it exist on somewhere on the website? I don't. It's an HTTPS address that's living in here. This is like a mini operating system. It's not out in the ether anywhere. Okay. But in the Share My Whiteboard, yeah. Chromebooks will work because it's a cloud-based, right? Versus anything moderator or whatever, which is living inside the projector, you can't make that work in the Chromebook right. because it has you can't be on the software, right? Yeah. But in the HTTP address scenario, 
share my whiteboard mode, Chromebooks will work. So as long as it's a secure protocol. That's it's, okay. it's HTTPS, right? Okay. So, and, and it gives you the address, and the best part is, after your meeting, that address refreshes, so somebody's not gonna hack in, you know, or if, so once you establish that, that address, it's that session, gone. How do you establish it? You like, it's 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 it automatically it, it generates? Yep. Will it send out an invite, or is that something you have to make? So it will project on the wall. Remember, in the in the share my whiteboard, it, it's thinking everyone's in the same room, so if you had remote users, you would have to give them the HTTPS okay. address. It's assuming you're in the room, because it's more for collaborative session. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the idea in high ed is you get other kids working on a project. You know, they're sharing the whiteboard. They could, you know, it all be live in front of them doing it. Where multi-site collaboration is the one that they they think is more about, you know, off-site. But it works off-site either one. Is there sound? No, you need audio. If you, you'd have to have a conference call. Uh, right. A spider exactly. phone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So which system does the conference call? Any, you connect any video TC, any VTC to its input. So remember, this is a projector on Star. Is this separate from this one? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't have, doesn't have VTC built in. Oh. We're not crazy. Well, we're crazy, but not that crazy. Okay. But you just plug the video input into this. Uh, was it typically HDMI or? Yes. Just plug them. This, they have dual HDMI, so you get the down one. You have your source and you split the screen. What, 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 um, we were, I don't know if you guys all know, maybe you did, maybe you already talked about that before it came, but um, the purpose of this is to determine whether or not Eno boards, even like the next iteration of Eno boards, is where we want to go for that type of interactive, or whether we want to go with something like this, which is, now, Eno boards are portable, but you still got to pull them off the wall and lug them around. This is is also portable. So no, so these. So now remember, we make five. They start at fourteen ninety nine complete. Right. Okay. I'm showing you. I started with the to the middle of the high end because this is more of what I've been selling into the high end market because it does the standalone functionality. Mm -hmm. The Eno board or anything in its class. You know, board, smart board, Promethean board, initially the the, uh, the the lower model bright links, they are all PC dependent. Right. Everything exists here, right. and that's just a delivery method. That's correct. Right. Yeah. So that now we make a bright link just like this, uh -huh. same form factor. It's PC dependent. Fifteen hundred bucks. You open the box, you add water, it works. It, everything is in the box: mounts, bolts, cables, pens, batteries, and all that. What our what makes ours very unique, and nobody else can run this up that flagpole right now. Do you have school of education? Do you, do you have a school for teachers? That's yeah. we are, yes. That, that that's us. us. That's us. I'm, I'm gonna hear the I'm gonna hear the angels. Oh, okay. What <laughs> makes what makes Brightlink the most the economical value for you is we are the only interactive solution on the planet. I can't speak for Mars. That is partnered with all three curriculum software uh, manufacturers: Smart, Promethean, and Mimeo. So where I've had schools in the past that have to buy a smart board and a Promethean board because these teachers are going to a school district that teaches Promethean software. These, this, these teachers are going to a school district that has smart software and smart won't let Promethean in their yard, right? You know, there's that legal nonsense there. We have licensed partner agreements with all three of them. You buy one bright link and you can run all that software on it legally as long as you buy the software. So you need one device to deliver all that. Nobody can run that one at the five hole. And so the, and, and the takeaway from that is the teacher doesn't care if it's an Eno board, a smart board, what's that? The teacher, the teacher needs to know how to run the, the curriculum software to load the little teddy bear in the train that speaks the alphabet, right? Whatever, you know, whatever they're going to accomplish with their, with their software, we're just a car. You know, you're gonna provide the gasoline. So ours has become, again, We've gone from this to this again because we've got all these partnerships now. I mean, it keeps me busy, but you know, and I, I, I miss more happy hours. <laughs> and the yeah. priorities. <laughs> so, so, you, so I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I wanted. But that's so. A, a, a great takeaway is one solution fits all, and and you're not buying it from a schlock operation. Not, not saying they are, but you're buying it from a company that's going to be around for a very long time. And we've been building this stuff forever. Nobody asked me. I'm afraid to, because that's not my alleyway. That's above my pay grades. 
I didn't ask you Go how ahead. much it would cost. Oh, you heard me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> how much the lamps cost, right? Those are the most expensive things. Do you know the answer to that, Ted? $400. Yeah, absolutely. The one for that one was nine. $900? Nine hundred dollars. Because it's old. Seventy nine dollars. Oh Lamps cost seventy nine dollars, which is five thousand dollars. Okay. Seventy nine bucks. Lamp life better than the average bear. I can ask that. Yeah. Why? I know you. No, the, uh, we build our you are so irreverent. <laughs> it's a good thing we're not a, a parochial school here. <laughs> I went to one. I know how to be in uh, That's why. <laughs> I know how to be in um, Epson, again, if you were to translate Epson, it means total cost of ownership. That's kind of our mantra in the world of education. You know, she asked me about super price deals and all that stuff. We have a whole program wrapped around education. Okay. And I'm not a salesman. I don't sell you guys stuff. You're going to partner with an Epson, Epson education partner. I'm just a resource to guide you through this maze of stuff. Okay. Um, that's all I do. And teach you guys how to use it. The more you like it, the more you want. right? But um, So we have a whole education program called Brighter Futures. It says it on this catalog somewhere. And that's super discounted prices. Can I have a copy? You, you want an autograph? I have to no, go, but thanks so much. You're welcome. Um, better pricing, extended warranties, and me. I should have said it in the right order. Me, extended. So Maybe we just go two out of three. Which one would you give up? Well, well. <laughs> so uh, three year next business day replacement warranty. One eight hundred. I hate you, Epson. And if the projector fails within three years, we overnight replace your, uh, you. Okay. And you can extend that to five years for like a hundred, one hundred and fifty bucks. I think it is depending on the model. Yeah, these projectors are they. I'm assuming they can be mounted. I assume they can also be portable. That's what I meant to address. Okay, so all the ultra show throw projectors need to be mounted. They must be mounted because this one needs to be mounted. Yeah, and it mounts up there. Remember, so it mounts on yeah, the wall. No, sticks I out, said that. Okay? Yeah. And it's a it's locked and loaded. We make a portable interactive projector for twelve hundred and fifty bucks. That's as good as that? It doesn't do all these tricks. It's project it's computer dependent, okay. but if you had a portable need, you put it in a car, you roll it into a room, you push a button, it calibrates, you teach a class, you roll it out of the room. Does it have the multi site feature? No. It does moderator though. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because Brightlink Pro only comes in ultra short throw mountains. But we have a Brightlink portable that it, it in that, do you know, oh, I probably won't ask him because of the thing. Do you know what a giraffe is? I'm familiar. What's a giraffe? It's an animal with a long neck. No. That's a it's a horse designed by committee. Oh. Okay, so the bright link. <laughs> The portable bright link is a projector grown out of. Why don't you guys make a portable version of that? We have no intention of it because you got to calibrate it, you got to go through all that. So they came up with a simple way to calibrate it. It works, it's portable. You unplug it, it shuts down in two seconds. You don't have to wait for the lamp to cool down. The lamp's on that at 99 bucks, but it works and it sells like popcorn in a movie theater because, unbeknownst to us, there are people, Catholic schools, right? People who have very limited budgets, they wanted. Interactive projectors could not afford five thousand bucks, right? They can't sometimes can't afford nineteen hundred dollars, but they can afford twelve fifty, and they can roll it over their own. So, I tell everybody: if you ever have a need for a portable, buy one, stick it in Tiff's office, and then when you need it, you sign it out. And if if the demand grows, you buy more. Yeah. Okay, so portable, and this one here is which one? This is not the Pro, correct? This is the Pro. This, this is, is the, the Pro. Yeah. I thought the fourteen thirty had a table mount. Is that different? Well, that's different. So don't jump ahead. Okay. <coughs> so the 1400 series, which is part of the city, there's two. The new ones are called the 1420 and the 1430. You have single sheets over there somewhere. I gave you 1420 and 1430 sheet. And those are the Brightman Pros that do all these tricks, plus moderator, plus share my whiteboard, and they mount. Plus the multi site. Absolutely. That's Brightman Pro. And the oh. only difference between the 1420 and the 1430 is the 1430 also allows you to use your finger versus just the pen. So you, okay. have, you have touch too. You can, you can draw and navigate using your finger. Okay. okay. And that's which one? The 14, 14, 1430. 1430. So the, the portable ones do not have the independence that this one does. That's right. That they're PC dependent. Correct. Just like the, the two low end writings. Just like an Eno board would be. Yeah. yeah. I was I was hoping that what you had there was something that was going to be portable. Now it seems to be more 
more useful and, and with all the traveling that we would do, that would be the one that now you I can do it with this one. The problem is because of its design and ultra short throw, when it's mounted like this, you get a lot of shadows, you gotta walk around it, right? The the the, the portable one is short throw, so it mounts back here, so it's not in your path. It's still gonna cast some shadows, but it's not an obstacle. So this you know, you can make this work, but we discourage it. And you're buying it with a mount, whether you like it or not, it comes in the box. You know, you can't get out of that. Tiff's question was the table mount. So this, when you order, you can order it with a wall mount or a table mount. The table mount, if this weren't here, for example, table mount allows me to clip it to the table and then this table becomes interactive. And I can draw all over it. I can put the finger unit, I can do things with my finger. Like what is? Well, I deal with um, architectural firms. Yeah, that's and they it. design, that would be exactly they use their CAD doing. software yeah. on it. So, and yeah. kids with handicaps. You know, you've got yeah. to disable kids that have a wheelchair, they can roll up and yeah. they can do exactly what everybody else is doing. Yeah. And if you and you share my board mode and all that stuff, it's awesome. So when you order it, it's no additional charge for the table mount. You just say, I need the W version or the T version. That's all. So what do you use to to get that turned on and make that functional with this mounted on the ceiling? Is there a remote with it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but so when it's completely installed, huh? this also gets mounted here. Okay. Power button. So it has to be right there. It, it couldn't be on the other side. It can be where you want. Okay. No. Wait a minute. Are you a lefty or a righty? Yes. Okay. So it would mount right here. <laughs> um, and this gives you full source selection. Turn it on, turn it off. You don't need a remote control. Plus, it gives you the ability, and there's more. It gives you the ability to plug in a thumb drive to load or save. But wait, there's more. Oh, I can't. On the bottom, there's a USB jack. If I, if I wire this completely, and when you buy it, make sure the installer is what the heck they're doing, right? You can make it so when this is connected, let's say somebody comes in from outside and they want to connect their PC, you can plug a USB cable into this, plug it into their PC. We'll download an app on here to allow them to project over USB to this. They don't even need to load. Can you also use that for the network, to go into our network in order to save the files on that? The network jack isn't here. It's there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's all there, it's just in different spots. All right. So fair enough. And he and, and this comes with the wireless card too. So here's the benefit of that. And this is kind of an interesting thing. If you had, let's say you wanted to do share my whiteboard remotely or multi-site collaboration remotely, but moderator locally, you can have it configured so that on the network, on the hardwired network, is where you're going to utilize all your resources, right? Your printer. Any of that stuff that's out there, you have a network printer, you can save it, you can email it. That all lives on your network, right? So you want to network it for that. But for connectivity sessions, you want to keep it local because of security issues. So your hardwired is simply for management and control, right? And saving. And the wireless card, you can do local sessions ad hoc. And then everybody has to be in this room to do it. But I honestly think if you go with the PC, uh, the, the Brightland Pro version, you'll start using, in high edit, it, it's like it catches on. There's multi-site collaboration. Um, there's a community college in Harford, Harford County. They bought 20 of these and they have four rooms with five in each room. So the instructor has one that he uses to teach class and then he sends the kids on collaborative missions. You know, group A, group B, group C, group D. And they have four Brightland pros and they're all collaborating with each other in this class. It's awesome to watch this thing work. And he's got like, you know, six kids sitting around each table each table's got a Brightling Pro, so there's five in a row, four working on Share My Whiteboard, and then, oh, actually, multi-site multi collaboration, because it's shared mm -hmm. life, and then the teachers in front, you know, here's the instructions you're gonna do, go, and then they all do it, and you can watch all four groups doing it simultaneously, you know, working on their responsibility, theirs, theirs, and theirs, and it all comes together, it's, it's crazy. And this guy, what I like about my job, is I don't know anything, I have a degree in MSU. I make stuff up. So, when I go to classes and I watch teachers and all that stuff, I learn so much because it make it, I stop and say, well, I, I, I got to tell somebody I saw that because it's cool, you know, and, and I don't think like a teacher yeah. uh, and they do. It's like all of a sudden I take away stuff that's like amazing. You know, that's interesting. Yeah, I can I can use that. You mind if I can. And, and it's so that's how when I so that's how when I present to schools, if you're high ed, I kind of start with Brighton Pro if you K through 12. First thing I load up the smart software or Promethean software because that's the culture they know. But suffice it to say, if you had Brightlink Pros in some rooms and you had regular Brightlinks in other rooms, 
the teacher's going to grab the pen and do the same thing in any room. It doesn't matter. It's just you'll have different functionality amongst the different models. And all the lamps are how much? $79. Did you pay attention? I have cameras. Yeah, 99 at the ceiling. Not seventy nine bucks. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. What do you guys think? I mean, just. Uh, I think it's, that there's a richness to this that's for, uh, available for actual teaching in the classroom. Mm -hmm. you know, our concern is we're, we're so widespread, we want to be able to get people to attend class even if they can't be mm -hmm. here. I mean, yeah, that, that, that's what we're looking yep. to be able to do. So Straight it has to work for us in terms of being able to see and hear what the lecture is. So we haven't talked about the, the hear the audio portion of that. That would have to be a dial-in with a spider phone. So that's just it. That's, that's the it. only link that you have is the dial-in. I thought you said something about the HDMI. Wasn't, did I misunderstand that? That if we plug in? Well, if you, if you plug in your VTC, that's how you get your video source if you want to do a split screen. Oh, so I can't? HDMI from my computer. Of course you can. But he's saying on the remote users, if they were in another location, how do they hear the, hear the audio? They the hear the dial it. Right. Okay. Okay. You so, have to have an audio source. Okay. So I have a Google Hangout set up right now that's recording this. So mm -hmm. let's say it was a class. And I have this computer hooked into that Epson, right? And they dial into yeah. it. And they're also connected to this. Because it's I'm only sharing my whiteboard, right? So in other words, remember I said, if I brought in a source, let me let me give me let me give you an example here. Hold on. I was going to do this. Disconnecting the uh, computer. I mean the uh, phone. Because okay. this is kind of cool too. Does it take long? No. Petitions that we could put up. Little carols. Little carols. Yeah. <laughs> Separate us all. Okay. <coughs> so what else I could do is you can't see this part, but I can connect with my PC to up to four of these wirelessly anywhere in the plan. All right. So I only have one because it's right there. I want to make sure I have. Full control here. Let's see. Uh, yep. Okay. Watch what I can do. Connected. Nope, not yet. That one is. As soon as I do that, it is. Here's what's interesting nothing on my sleeve, no cables. All I am is connected to this wireless card. I've got no connectivity wired anywhere, and I can drive my PC from here. I can run it, I can load it, I can do whatever I want, just like if I had wires connected to it and I was sitting in front of it. So from anywhere, you can have a PC connected and remotely control it. It's cool stuff. Now, can you save that screen? Like, let's say you circle and do some fancy stuff on there, and you want to save that to your whiteboard folder. Yep. Yep, but to do that, I have to do one thing slightly different. To do that, I can't have full control of my PC because I have to use the internal link. So when I connect, I turn off remote drive and have that I, my name pops up. You want me to show you? I'd be happy to show you. I wouldn't be opposed to it. Okay. Please. Slightly different. That's all. I would need to have physical touching with my PC. Okay. Okay. I'm disconnecting. Enjoy this moment of music while we find your caller. Okay. Now watch as soon as I connect again. Where's my tiger? I didn't, I didn't erase that. It's not an invisible tiger. <laughs> So now I can do anything from here. Watch. So what do you want to bring up like a spreadsheet? Let's sure. bring up a photo first. Oh no, we already did a photo. Let's bring up a spreadsheet. You know, you could have budgets, right? You could have all kinds of stuff here, whatever, whatever it is. And, right? And then you can walk up to it. Oh, that's bad on a spreadsheet, right? 
Yeah. 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 Right, it's not good. So then you can make comments. You know, that's the budget. See? And that's something else, and that's something else. And then I can say, capture it. Okay, so your option would be to use your computer as a whiteboard or to use it as, as a source. A as okay. a source, right? Okay. So, and then that now. Now, if you go to whiteboard, it should be there, correct? Yes. Anything from anything. I can bring up, you know, a web page. You can bring up a YouTube video and freeze frame. So I have a um, fire and rescue in Fairfax County. And they have 37 firehouses. They put one in each house and they play back videos. Well, here's what they do. I never do this. They videotape when they fight fires. Mm -hmm. So they do it from all different angles. And then at, when it's over, they come back and they review the tapes and they'll freeze frame and go, you know, you were standing here and if you were over here, you know, this is kind of where this, we should have fought it from this. And they educate it. They freeze frame and save it and they build a whole library of reference material. They've been doing this for a year. So we just sold 14 more into their training academy so that when the guys come out of the training academy, go to the firehouse, they're grabbing the same pen. It's awesome. It really is. It's fun how much all these different people like me. I bet. Yeah. We have we have needs like right now, but then we also have interest in looking at what um, the technology, how it can help us for doing things that we haven't yet done. Right. Um, and some of our some of our I mean, some of our needs from a school of education, the people here are mostly graduate, uh, but our undergraduate program, you know, understanding, being able to use this kind of technology to teach teachers. Are we still meeting at three? Yes, sir. Okay. Two. Um, two? Oh, no, three. That's an hour. That's wrong. That's an hour fast. Oh, all right. Whatever. Two, whatever. Um, the, the undergraduate, but there's also... Um, yeah, and, and so so to use that in a teacher prep program to to teach people who will be teachers. Teach the um, teacher, right. Right. In the graduate programs, um, we have four masters that are technology masters um, and one letter of endorsement that's a technology. Mm -hmm. Okay. In addition, in our doctoral program, we have a cohort of students who are in Muscat Oman. That are that faculty interact with remotely. So we're looking to find tools that will help. And and I forgot our our newest initiative is in Mesa, Arizona. So uh, oh, and we also have yeah we have a, a, a cohort in Alberta, Canada. We don't do Canada. I'm kidding. You will. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but the. So, so we're trying to think about yeah. You know, there's there's the core thing here, which is clear. I mean, that's that's the easiest thing for us to to imagine. But it's the other stuff that we need technology probably to to help us to do what we want to do better. Um, and that's why that's why I'm I don't understand all the bells and whistles and all the acronyms and all that kind of stuff. But I understand what we want to be able to do with it um, and the extent to which that will advance what we're capable of. That's that's really my my interest. Um, so here's the best answer. And, okay. and again, it's coming from, from, from a non-salesman's perspective. Okay. okay. So the thing about Brightlink that's, I won't say magical, but the thing about Brightlink that's unique Absent Brightlink is that we have different product for different uses and for different applications, and you can mix and match these throughout the school, saving money where you need to. Okay. But in the high end world, we're the only people who make a product with more focus towards high end that doesn't require a smart notebook or something you know, to make it work. And yet, it still runs all that for school of education, etc. But we're throwing in you know, those things with multi-site collaboration and share my whiteboard and all the other stuff that becomes great for the, the distance learning, the remote user, anywhere on the planet. This guy could be in Alberta, Canada. If he can get in on the on the VPN, 
he can connect to this projector and watch your presentation over there. That's awesome. So the, now, what does that mean? It's just like when you buy a car. What's the first thing you do when you buy a car? After you drive, you look at the dashboard and try to figure the whole thing out, right? How the heck do I turn on the seat warmer, right? All that, because it's all in different spots. Well, this has got all those buttons plus a whole bunch more. That's the down, so you got to learn it all. Now, we know that. And that's why they hired people like me to come out and teach it, right, and get you familiar with it. I'm not a trainer. I'm a teacher. I'll, I'll, I'll make you comfortable doing things. And then we have a lot of how-to videos. Okay. And I'm telling you right now, if you try to learn it all at once, this pen weighs 50,000 pounds. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. You want to take it in steps, learn how to use the whiteboard mode first, yeah. then mm -hmm. learn how to capture, then, you know, start working with TIFF. Get it all set up on your network. Mm -hmm. Establish how you want to save it. You want everyone to give them an individual folder. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the magic, yeah. Yeah. right? Imagine being able to do your work at home at night, send your PDF, PowerPoint PDF to a folder, walk in and load it up on your, you know. Snapshots. I would think. It's that. Or Google Drive. Or Google Drive. Yeah. Well, the other thing too is I'm Google assuming that any soft, yeah. it will, it's compatible. So say for example, um, we're declaring I think we're in the mode where we're declaring death to PowerPoints and we're doing okay. other things, um, other kinds of programming um, to just to, to develop um, um, presentations that would be more in, in themselves more interactive. Right. Um, so will it accept anything that you can send to it? Well, so anything other than yeah. PDF, JPEG images won't work off the thumb drive. But anything you run on here will show up there, no problem. That's also problem. Right? So you've always got the good old-fashioned way, whether it's wired or wireless. You saw me just do it both ways wireless, too, mm -hmm. right? So there's, there's no holes barred. It's just, you know, which bucket are you going to use to accomplish what thing? And I'll guide you. I mean, that's my thing. So, you know, if you're going to use a remote person who wants to walk in and, you know, bring your, bring, bring your father to work today or something like that, and he wants to just plug in his laptop and show pictures of you know yeah. the car, the Camaro he rebuilt. He can plug his laptop right into this box that's out to here, download an application, he can do a presentation over PowerPoint. Or he can put JPEGs on a stick drive, you can tell him at a time, plug them into that wall and page through his JPEGs. So it's it's so easy, but yet there's so much to learn. And unfortunately, I gotta learn it all. You know, we've got the new models, I haven't even learned half that stuff yet, but I know I've seen it in action, I know it works. So you need, and I'm here to help there too. Remember I said, I guide you through this craziness. You come up with a list of needs and then we determine which ones fit the bill. That That's all you need. So you said to me tomorrow, Jerry, all I want to do is replace that with a more effective way to do it. I can replace that for $1,499 and it'll be three times brighter than that. And it'll be 50% bigger than that on that wall. I can do it for that. So that's the basic right like and it'll do everything you're doing now, and it would require the same connectivity that you're doing now. But you could put a bright red pearl in that wall for still less than you paid for this solution and get all that, right? And that much more over time when you network it and all that stuff. So no matter which way you slice it, we're a lot less money, but I want you to get stuff that you're going to use because mm -hmm. otherwise you hate it, right? Yeah. Well, otherwise you won't use it. And well, right. It's wasted money. And, you, and then, you know, it's like in sales, more people. I think fewer people will ever say, hey, call Jerry. That guy gives a great, a great presentation <coughs> versus don't call Jerry. He's not paying me hand, you know. I mean, you get less good positive feedback than you do yeah, negative no, feedback. <coughs> not that I ever get any negative feedback. I just want for the record, it was the case. <laughs> okay, so going through those three parts that you talked about with the pro and going along with our needs, which would be an in-person sort of classroom, an online classroom, and our collaborative satellite schools. Okay, so we have like you want Brightling, you want Brightling Pro. So the, the moderator would be for the in classroom stuff. Moderator is anywhere, but all you're doing is bringing their screen into view. So so it would be the same as this media sheet. No, I, no, it's okay. not even that. It's allow me to demonstrate. Am I on the wall? I don't know. Yes. Yes, you are now. 
So moderator is a BYOD solution. Bring your own daiquiri. <laughs> I showed the first time I was so embarrassed. I had a blender in a bag of ice. I don't know. So BYOD solution is this. You have BYOD. You have 50 people logged on. Up to 50 people logged on. Doesn't have to be on site. They don't have to be on site. Okay. But you you don't see their screens. All you see is who they are. So you're going to see. So everybody's device has an ID. So that, so the benefit of BYOD in a classroom is if they hand out the devices, every device has a number. So Cindy has 12, you have 14, you have 16, 12, right? So your device 12. So when I see device 12 up there, I know that's your screen. I can put you on the wall. So moderator is the ability to identify anybody who's logged into a session, and they all fill this role up here. And then you can drag them into one screen, two screens, three screens, or four screens. You can project them all at once or one at a time. <laughs> And it ultimately, you know, can look like that. Yes. So that's moderator, and that's huge for collaborative yes. sessions where you're bringing in resources from the outside. Or again, everybody has a project, and of four people, each has its own assignment. And you put them all up, and you get to the final product. That's moderator. Okay. Go. So then, share my whiteboard would be good for you know people that Remote. are online. 50, up to 15 people can be anywhere and see what's happening here in the whiteboard mode. So see that image? If I wanted them to see that, I would capture it with the little picture of the camera, put it in my whiteboard, and then they could see it. Can so, they then write on theirs yeah. and we'll see it yeah. all on that board? Yeah. That's so I do that, right? And then I'm going to send that to the whiteboard. And so when I'm in this mode, they're going to see what's on the whiteboard, you know, before I switch screens. And then that's a lot of graphics there. Then I go over to my whiteboard. And there it is. Now they see it, and then they can be somewhere, and they can be doing this, and it would be showing up here, okay. and vice versa. Yep. Okay. And then the multi-site collaboration would be how we would tie in our the satellite these. if right. we want to communicate to the other educators there, or if we wanted to do like a little mock conference sort of situation. Yeah. Okay. And. Like I described at Hartford Community College, this guy has project sessions right in his classroom. He puts the problem on the wall, and then these four groups go to work. Now, they probably have a lot of money. They could buy all these put five in one room. But the idea was it was, it was just brilliant because I never thought of that. So the professor puts a scenario on the board, and then the four teams go, and they each see each other's work develop, and they continue to contribute to it all across four different right legs on one table. It's crazy. And that solution cost them less than two smart boards. But not less than two Eno boards. Enos are less. They are, but then you also have to take into consideration the, the, projector, the, projector. the projector. Yeah, yeah. But they're really not, um, the, we were quoted at, um, it was for the two boards, I think it was $2,800. And then the one board here for the education is uh, about 25. For the, the 14, highest end. The 1430? Yeah. That's finger touching everything. Yes. So it's 25. And that's everything you need mounts, cables, ducts, bolts, screws, projector, everything. And a $79 lamp, not a $900 lamp. Use your words. Um. I'm thinking, I'm thinking that there are, there is utility. Okay. The, the portable one has the moderator, bring your own device. The, the new models on your price sheet, it's called 436WI. Well, it's somewhere on there, but the new model is the 536WI. Just started okay. shipping. 536WI. And you know the general price range? 1250. 1250. Okay. So that, that I think has, I, I'm thinking, for example, the workshop that we're planning on doing. Um, it's traffic. Yeah. That that might, that might actually solve all the connectivity issues mm -hmm. that we would have there. Mm -hmm. That it would allow us to really do that workshop in, in a very, very meaningful way. Without worrying about external. Without worrying about issues. any of the externals or, or anything. So to do it, if you wanted to do it with a moderator, 
you would have to add ninety nine dollars to that price because you got to order the wireless card. Wireless card, yeah. okay. So it would be twelve fifty right. plus ninety. Plus plus ninety nine. All right. Um, this comes with the wireless card. That one okay. Does. But I'm just saying we have there is there are some uses where the portability is um, necessary mm -hmm. or preferred. Okay. Um, but then I also absolutely see, especially you know. This here is how much? This will the, the top of the line version of this. Okay, twenty five. Twenty five. Okay. So but wait, we, we have a special. <laughs> We're going down. Okay. So now I'm taller than you guys. So it's twenty five hundred dollars for the top of the line one, which is the finger touch and everything. If you don't care about finger touch, well, how much is it? Twenty twenty three ninety nine. Twenty two ninety nine. Fourteen twenty. Fourteen twenty is twenty three. So twenty three ninety nine. Uh, twenty two ninety nine. Twenty two ninety nine. That's it. Huh? Interested in the finger touch? I don't know. Are you? But is that something that would be? It still uses pens, but the yeah. finger. Now, what's the benefit of the finger? It's not so much the finger; it's gesturing. Mm -hmm. If you had, if you had one class that was again architectural or CAD, and people wanted, you know, mm -hmm. then finger comes in handy because you can do eight points of touch simultaneously. Us. Oh. So that's cool. But you know, otherwise, finger writing with your finger, eh, not yeah. so much. You know, but and people do it because it's cool. They can do it with my finger. But you're paying two hundred bucks for that benefit. Yeah. So okay. And, so say he, so say twenty four just to be safe. Right. Okay. And so that's everything. And that's everything. The only thing you would add to that in the school of education might be smart notebook or Promethean software. You know, for those classes, and that's two hundred and fifty bucks. Well, we wouldn't necessarily need to do that because it's going to be internal to us if it is compatible with That's right. them. Legally compatible. Because yeah. you know, up until that Because we're not taking it into the school districts. If, right. If you if you tried to load smart software on a PC and connect it to a Brightly, it used to give you a watermark. Uh, you can't do this on okay. you. Now it doesn't do that okay. because we're partner. Okay. So that's why I'm saying it's legal. It's it's still yeah. not possible with other brands, but that's it is. Um, so, so okay, so 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 I'm I'm thinking I don't know I mean we'll have to talk about it but I'm thinking that a portable version plus plus one that would be mounted now then we would need to figure out where though I mean this room is where we are right now but long term is it isn't where we're going to be right so I, I don't know if they're easy to uninstall they are I mean you don't want to but of course you can right. Um, I don't know. I'm asking. Yeah, you know, they, I mean, okay. whatever goes up comes down. So, because and you don't, because you don't have to run, you don't have to run anything in the ceiling. It's just all wiring in the wall. So it just mounts the wall. You snake your cables down, and it's done. Okay. You know, the hardest part is configuring it to your network. Right? That'd be the most complicated. So I have to say this. I'm putting my salesman's hat back on, but you're gonna thank me when I do this. So if so, we before you got here, Tim and I talked about the Epson Education Program. There are certain authorized dealers for that. Not everybody is an authorized dealer. Okay, right. so if you buy through an authorized dealer, then you get that price and you get the extended warranty, the land price, me, and all that. We have a first time users special. You can buy one and only one, and I know who you are for 50% off. And the idea is to get you to dive in the pool and not stick your toe. Do you decide which one? Like, let's say we want that little one and the big one. No, you right? can, no I would tell you, you can only buy the Brightling Pro with that. So you, I would say pick the 1430, get the finger, all right? I'll give you the finger. And then- uh, <laughs> You wouldn't be the first one, it's okay. <laughs> um, or the last. But you can get it at 50% off to an authorized Brighter Futures partner. It's called the first time user promo. I don't know when it expires. I would probably say December 31st. Okay. But um, that gets you one in the door, mounted in here. I come back, we bring anybody potentially as a user in there. We give them the fire drill. And then you know we explain all the different models again, just like we did today. And then everyone makes you know their own business decisions based on that. If there's multiple applications for this, but you get one in the door for cheap. You check it. I got the coupon right here. So we we would buy the pro for half the price, right? Right. But that wouldn't keep us from being able to buy the other one. Oh no, we just wouldn't get it at half the price. Right. You only get, you get one seed unit. That's fine. No, so, no. Oh, we would buy the two for the price of one. That's right. Mm -hmm. Would that be null and void? Let's say uh, engineering bought one. That's so one for Wilkes University. You know. Nice try, though. Did they buy one? I don't know. 
Don't tell me. Well, stop them. <laughs> no. um, Do they serious. even know about this? I haven't told anyone. Okay. Be very, very okay, quiet. Stop broadcasting. Be, what was it? Be very, very quiet. Be very, very quiet. Uh, Elmer Fudd. I was going to say, it sounds more Be like very, that. Be very, very quiet. We're hunting rabbits. <laughs> Um, and I'm going to have to go meet with Kurt or he'll yell at me. So, all right. All right, so I have I, I what do you guys think? I think it's uh, it's going to meet more of our needs than that one. The and meeting, and no. in some okay. parts it will even take the place of some of this. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that this shouldn't be a thing, but with the, the moderator part, and I mean, I think that even the collaboration of the, I think it'll, mm -hmm. yeah. The Brightlink Pro 1430 demo, your cost would be 1150 for the 1430 demo for one unit. 1430 is the is this one plus the, with the finger touch. touch. With the finger yeah. touch. See, so what we do is we give a discounted cost to the dealer so he can sell it to you because sure. it's way below his cost. So Brighter Future School, Eleven fifty. Wow. No, that's fourteen twenty. I'm sorry, fourteen thirty. Fourteen thirty. Wall mount. Do 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 do. Twelve fifty. Twelve fifty. That's 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 the, the high end of this one. Yeah, that's the top of the line one that does every trick. Twelve hundred and fifty bucks. All right. One and one only. But now you gotta. What we need to do is talk about who your authorized dealer options are. And you know, steel case is going to get mad because they can't play. Yeah, no, that's okay. Because they're still going to, you know, work with us on other things. Sure. Well, now, so if you wanted them, so this is like I always walk on thin ice when I talk about this. But if they're your preferred dealer, we can we can work with them to have them provide you all Epson because obviously my goal is to get you to buy other Epsons too, right? And, I, and they could be an authorized part of future reseller just to you. My only problem with doing that is they're not resourceful yet, and it would be an extreme learning curve, but that's my job anyway. Right. So if you want them to be your brighter futures dealer, because they've always taken good care of you, blah, blah, blah. Actually, it would be CBI, who's a reseller of Steelcase. Yeah, we don't deal directly with Steelcase. Oh, we deal with CBI. CBI? Creative C Business Interiors. Yes. Where are they based out of? Um, Hanover yeah, Township. Township Industrial Park. Okay, so if you want them to be it, then you have to send me a formal request in an email. Okay. And it's like, Jerry, you know, CDI has been our provider of audiovisual equipment and, and services and yada yada forever and ever. We prefer to continue to buy through them. Can you provide them my educational costs? And I have to explain the rules to them because we give them adjusted discounts through their distributor so that they can sell you at or below those prices you have on that sheet there. Okay. Right, because if they went to my if, if they went to an Epson distributor and have the education pricing, they're going to be four thousand bucks. You know, you might want to contact Dave first. I'm not right. sure and, it's okay with him. And okay. give him my card. I'll okay. give you another card. Okay. So I can do that because if it, I don't want you to have to say, oh, I got to buy this or I got to buy this. I want you to be happy, right? But I want to sell you Epson, obviously. Okay. You know, and, and the best part is when you look at the rest of the line, we start coming back and going, Jerry, we got this unique situation. We had an auditorium, blah, blah, blah. You know, I know I can get you the right stuff. And uh, when you look at the pricing in there, you'll, you'll you'll go crazy when you know how cheap it is right. for what you're buying. It's you know what I'm thinking? It's just, it, the president was giving a, a presentation um, in the Dark Center, which is it's our, our, our theater auditorium. And um, it's not wired for what he needed to have done. Yeah. And so it was all, they had to go through all these, these machinations to try to, you know, and he's going, he's going, what do you mean? It's just a PowerPoint. It's not that big a deal. We could have wheeled something like this in and, and put it right up there, you know, eight feet, right? Eight feet screen, eight foot screen right behind him, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and, and been done with it. Yeah. Um, Remember, this always has to be projected on a hard surface because you're touching it. Well, this would be just projected. You wouldn't be touching okay, it. Okay, right. You know, he'd just, he'd just be um, just using it as a PowerPoint. But what I'm saying is it even has utility at the low end. That's right. 
if if you're in a situation where there is no adequate way right. to hook up, you know, to deliver a PowerPoint. That's right. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So it's a lot, I mean, you know, I, what I just did is completely fire hosed you, I know that. But my job is uh, just to be a resource. So yeah. now you put your heads together. And I'm telling you, I send, that, I send everybody home with homework. Do a needs analysis, mm -hmm. you know, and a wish list. And see how many, in, in, in sales, it's called a Ben Franklin. You ever heard of that expression? To Ben Franklin, you do lists of pros and cons and, you know, how they all work together. Do a, a wish list and a needs list. And then we see how much of that we can do. We could probably do it all. And you can minimize expenses in some areas. And the best part is if you get this first time by, yeah, that's, like that. that's a beautiful thing. And I still do think the, the portable one has utility for, yes. for us. And how large, how heavy is the portable one? 10 pounds. Okay. We've got young people here. It we looks just like that. this one. You know, Does it not, come with a case? I can't no, the case is probably 39 bucks. So. All right. So we need to, we'd want to get the case. Yeah, too. Which I'm going to do that. I'm going to ask Tiff a question on this, too. Let's see how smart you are. She's very smart. I'm just going to she's smart, all right, but I don't know if she's a Smart, you know what? Does it involve common sense? Because goodness, I'm out. <laughs> okay, so it looks That's just true. like that, except it's the new version. Jeff. Okay. You want to shut the camera off so you're not embarrassed nationally? <laughs> Can you tell me? And I'll let you help. All right. There's the portable. This is the old portable version. Actually, it's this is just a short throw of the 436 eyes on this side, but this is what the physics looks like. Why is the lens partially blocked by plastic on that? Let me take a look at it and read it. Because it's a short throw, so it's going to be projected from there up. Uh, no, do you want another guy? Oh, no, yes. Any, do you want again? I have no clue. See how the plastic is partially blocking the lens? Uh -huh. mm. That's what it looks like one of those Disney monsters, because it does. Which is cool. You mean Mike Mozinski? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, nice. uh, yeah. Is that this one here? Yeah. See how the plastic's blocking it? It's not a complete circle. Uh, it has to do with. It's got to have something to do with, with keeping the shot out of the way. You guys are educators in high end, right? Okay. And you don't know the answer to this? I'm a little scared. If the whole thing was covered in plastic, no light would come out. <laughs> to make the light brighter. No, I just, it was, yes, I, it was, he was just yeah. saying, <laughs> yeah. goodness gracious. If the whole thing was covered, There'd nothing would come out. <laughs> See, yeah, that's, that's, that's the, that's the negative reason. We yeah, were looking a, for positive. Well, that's yeah. the whole psychological thing. Like Bob's mother had three kids. One's kid was Ted, was named Ted. One kid's name was Jim. What was the third kid's name? Bob. That's right. But people, I don't know. Uh, You're glass half empty kind of guy, aren't no. you? No. That's Salespeople, nope, cool. nope, glass is too big. <laughs> We're not big enough. Oh, yeah, it's not big enough. Big enough. The glass is like right. totally big. Okay, so, so, um, I you know, there's plenty of people you can talk to if you, okay. you know, I'm here to help any way I can. Tiff has a whole, I'm gonna give you another card. So, if you're gonna want to, over there, I get it. I'm um. 